brought to you by DIS, keeping companies connected with cloud-based solutions. Come on, City. Connor, good to chat with you again. Um, I'll start by getting your thoughts on Saturday's performance and result. Now two days on, what are your thoughts and feelings? Yeah, obviously really, really disappointed with the overall result um, and performance for for probably a larger part of the game. Um, felt we, we started well, but again, from, from conceding, we... Um, we switched off and conceded again when it was important that we stayed in the game and, and made it difficult and, and built on that. So, yeah, overall, we're, we're really disappointed. Mark, after the game, referenced a, a lack of fight, maybe, from some of the players. What do you think that's down to? Um, it's hard to put your finger on exactly what it's down to. Um, but, I, you know, I agree and we, we both, you know, had conversations regarding that, that... The running stats, etc., were really high, just like normal. Um, so it wasn't, a, you know, something that um, was having to go effort or anything like that. It was more just uh, being more aggressive in our play and, and making it harder for them to to play. Do you feel at all let down by the players with that lack of fight in mind? I wouldn't say let down. Um, what I would say is it gives us an idea of. Um, the, the squad better on you know players who you can trust and players who you know that are gonna give absolutely everything to the to the cause and um, you know again the the players have got an opportunity to put things right and to and to um, you know react in the right way and, and we're hoping for for that to happen. Is that something that you've communicated to the players since I know Callum has just spoken to us and said that you've done a fair bit of analysis work today. Yeah, you know, you know, you try and um, improve on the areas that you've maybe not done so well on in the in the previous game, and and when it comes down to um, maybe a lack of, of fight and desire, these things can be corrected. But it's just sometimes um, what happens with players at all levels is sometimes on certain days they they don't quite perform or show that um, level of, of aggression for whatever reason. So now that's been highlighted. We hope to see a real a real fight uh, performance. You talk about that opportunity for both you and Mark to learn from Saturday's performance. I know that you're in a period now where you can be a bit more experimental and try different things. Despite the defeat and despite maybe the lack of fight from some as referenced, do you still have the opportunity to, to learn a fair bit about the, the team in that system and formation? Yeah, I think every every game you're, um, you're learning and you're, and you're figuring out... Um, you know, people in, in different ways and again I think what we, we need to see and everybody needs to see is um, people out there who want to be leaders, who are good team players, who who uh, put the side before themselves, um, you know, are willing to, to do the ugly things to, to warrant in, in getting victories. So I think players that want to put the team first um, and then in possession they show the qualities is, is what we're after, you know, looking into a, a positive end to the season. I asked Mark a similar question on Saturday, but from your own opinion, how much is this shaping your summer? Yeah, it's, you know, as, as a football club, we've got to do the work off the field, and um, you know, players have got to perform because players are uh, out of contract at the end of the season. So, from now till the end of the season, um, you know, the traits in players are, are visible to all staff, and you know, we want to make sure that from the start, we said it about recruitment, we want the correct characters who we know we can trust to go out there and do the job. How productive was that uh, open conversation that you had uh, amongst the players after after the result on Saturday? Brilliant because it shows um, people care, people have um, people have a lot of ownership on, on what they do and, and how they want to approach things and one thing's for sure, if you want to be successful um, you're going to have to play in successful teams. Um, football is not tennis or golf, it's not an individual sport. Um, to be, to win things, to win trophies, you've got to be a good team player. You've got to go out there and put um, everybody else in, in front of you, your own development and um, own performance at times. And you've got to go out there and get the result. And I think that's what we're trying to build here um, as a club and as a team. We, we want players who are going to put the team first at all times uh, because we've got good players in this building and I'm sure if they do that um, we'll have success and again speaking to Callum only a few moments ago he spoke about the need to maybe take things back to basics somewhat simplify things and, and find 
that form that, that you had previously in the season that, that served you so well. Yeah, and it, it comes back to um, collectively being on the same page and and players doing their role and their responsibility to the best of their efforts, even though potentially it might mean them um, having to play or defend in certain areas that they don't want to be because they're an attacking player. But again, the, we have to reinforce the importance that everything is about the team um, and, and the three points at, at the end of the game. What's more important for you and, and Mark now with these three games remaining? I realise that you will want to win every single game, but are you still going to try and experiment and go for different things, different systems, formations, or is it now you need to get the win? Um, I think it's it's a balance of both. Uh, what I would say is um, there's an opportunity for for players to um, to right the wrongs from the last game, um, but there's also enough time for us to experiment from now until the end of the season, um, which is brilliant if you think about it, because we're starting to to um, try different players in different formations and different players coming from the squad into the starting lineup. So um, I'm hoping that we can. Um, we can really get to know this group of players even further, which will benefit us longer term. And with that mantra in mind, Connor, do you then feel that you should be judged as critically as you have been previously, given that now you, you are looking to try and try different things? Um, I, th I think it's uh, hard for me to say. I think everybody's entitled to their opinion and, and rightfully so. You know, me and Mark are the managers of Bradford City and with that becomes a lot of... Um, a lot of pressure to perform and, and we know that um, but what we want to do is is to to build something to be successful um, you know and to and to work on things because we were trying to develop different areas in the club to make sure that uh, this club is a success and and giving the chance to do that um, you know is, is what we need looking forward to tomorrow's game I'll start by getting team news from you firstly and how is Ollie Crankshaw because I know there was a, 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 a well, a deal of concern after after Saturday. Um, uh, Ollie's Ollie's asthmatic, um, so he's had a, a little bit of complication with his with his breathing, um, etc. Um, you know, we've been reassured that it's nothing long term or anything like that. But you know, with the season changes in weather, um, you know, it can cause you know different things happening with asthma. So we've just got to um, monitor him a little bit further. Does that rule him out of tomorrow night's game? Yeah, it rules him out just in uh, from a health point of view and, and looking after him. Um, elsewhere, Billy Clark, I know that you are awaiting some results back from a scan. Yeah, he's um, it's a muscle strain, but it's it's not a bad one. It's just a, a grade one, so we can look to involve him in, in the next week or so. So um, better better news, yeah. So not season over for, for Billy Clark. Not yet, no. And Lee Novak as well, how did he fare with the minutes that he got under his belt and how is he looking fitness-wise? Could he, could he make a full 90? Obviously, he's, he's been out for a, 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 quite a long time for Lee and I think he said to me it was his, his first operation ever um, yeah. for somebody of his um, career and, and, and where at this stage he is in his career. Um, it's quite surprising, so um, it just shows what a great athlete he is and, and what he's done in the game. But again, to get in the minutes on the pitch was a real lift to everybody else so um, we're looking to build his minutes up but we're also uh, mindful that the, the season's not you know we've only got three games left How big an opportunity is that for, for someone like Lee Novak who I know for a fact will have been so frustrated to have not played as big a part as he would have wanted to this season he's got three games remaining now to, to really show you guys what he can do Yes um, he did play a number of games for us um, when we took over and you know he was he was brilliant and um, so now We've got to manage Lee and and, and his expectations because he probably wants to play every minute of every game, but um, realistically, that's probably not quite possible. Looking ahead then to, to Salford City as opponents, what do you make to them as a side now, of course, under the stewardship of, of Gary Berrier? Yes, um, really good side. Um, they were a good side under Richie Wellens and now Gary Boy has gone in there and he's you know he's done a fantastic job so far and... And he's, uh, you know, from the time that he was at this club, he was a, a great guy and a real pleasure to work with. Yeah, how was your working relationship with Gary when he was at the football club? Yeah, he was brilliant uh, with me and Mark. He involved us in, in quite a lot of things at times, you know, um, which was nice and which was maybe a little bit different. But I guess coming from his development um, past, he, he understood um, the process. 
Um, I wanted to ask you, Connor, about um, the, the planned social media boycott that's going to take place uh, this coming weekend. All football clubs in the English Football League and further afield as well will be taking part. As a stance, what do you make to it and, and what the intended target is? Yeah, I think um, I think everybody's in agreement in, in, in the football pyramid. Um, you know, obviously, on, on the on social media and things like that you hear a lot of things going on um which is not nice so i think the stance will be will be positive for everyone and, and hopefully it can you know it's not going to change everything but maybe it, it highlights it a little bit more has it got to a point now with, with social media that, that something has to give something has to happen i think um you know ideally something that needs to happen for for people in football um and i guess Things like accountability for your profile is, is maybe one that would um, solve it quite quickly. How easy that is to do, I'm, I'm not really sure, but I imagine it would solve um, a lot of problems. Finally, from me, Connor, um, I wanted to get your thoughts, if I may. I, I was watching the uh, League Cup final yesterday and with the 8,000 fans inside Wembley, didn't half make a difference, I've got to say. Um, I don't know if you watched the game at all, but I just wondered, with fans now seemingly planning to come back into grounds, how big a difference would the fans have made so far in your time as, as joint manager of Bradford City? Yeah, I think I think everybody. Could, I, I didn't watch the full game yesterday, but um, I saw the the start of it, etc. And and you could just see the the added intensity in the game and and the natural noises, you know, you know, not with the the fake one in the background. So <laughs> um, it was it was really nice and actually quite surprising um, because it's it's been so different recently. And so, from from my side, I think having the the, the Bradford City fans back would be a massive boost. I think for the players, etc., for everybody at the club, and the amount of people that come through the door at Bradford City is remarkable. So, for them to be here cheering the team on, getting behind the team would be would be first class, and we're we're really hoping to for it to be as soon as possible. I know you're busy bees, I know you work hard away from the football field, but do you often think about what, what could be when the fans are back and, and what that emotion will be like? It's just exciting really, I think that's the, you could determine it just saying it's very exciting to to think one day that when we when we come out um, there's going to be people there sh uh, shouting the team on and, and really being that 12th man and, and that's what everybody needs and um, I think every manager in the, in the division would tell you at times it doesn't feel quite like a, a League 2 game at the minute just because of the lack of atmosphere and and I think um, there's going to be a real buzz because it's when you're not being allowed to do something for so long as a fan and you come back you, you, you've really got that um, appreciation for, for it. Yeah. Go well tomorrow Connor, cheers. Thank you, cheers Jamie. Hi Connor. Hi there. Uh, obviously part of the, the Covid situation has been not just that fans aren't, aren't there, but also that you haven't been able to arrange the friendly games, not just to get players fit, but as you said earlier, to try out different formations. How difficult has it been to actually to manage the club away from the, the actual league matches to get stuff like that done when you can't arrange friendly matches? Yes, it, obviously it's a, a squad game and, and it, you know, you're in charge of making sure everybody's in the best condition that they possibly can be in, so there's there's uh, obstacles along the way, and that does include uh, from a COVID point of view that you know you can't just you know go oh we're playing a friendly against Blackburn on on Tuesday or Wednesday. It's, there's a lot more procedures and a lot harder to to do. So um, you know, but you find ways to to train in different ways to keep people fit. But again, these obstacles along the way. And has that in some ways? Uh meant that players that take longer coming back because they can't get that much fitness from playing friendlies. Yeah, I think ideally you've you've got a game to, to bed players in before they actually return to the to the competitive league um, of League Two, but at this moment in time we've not long left in the season and, and we've got to put players in, um, you know, without doing without being in a in a game before, yeah. Um just touching on Salford again, what are you actually expected of from them tomorrow because they're in that situation you were in a couple of games ago where they're just outside the playoffs so they want to win but they won't want to lose either so it's a difficult situation for them yeah we've we you know we've seen we've seen bits of them and, and been watching them um i'm not i don't think that they're a type of team to 
to sit off. I think they're going to be, you know, coming for us and and being on the front foot and being aggressive. Um, I think we can expect that type of game. And from what we've seen, they've, you know, they are very good and they're up there for a reason. Um, so I think, you know, again, we've we've got to make sure we go out there and perform and and put up a real fight. Okay, thanks very much. Good luck tomorrow. Cheers, Pete. Thank you. Hi, Connor. Hi there. Well, you were saying earlier about obviously the team ethic. I mean, you know, is, is that individuals perhaps getting away from those around them and perhaps, I wouldn't say doing their own thing, but perhaps sort of forgetting they're sort of part of a bigger unit? And I think these things can happen subconsciously um, within a season for, for whatever reason. Um, but again, as, as managers myself and Mark, we. We warrant everything about everything's about the team. Everything's about um, you know. It's not about being selfish. You know, it's not about being a luxury player and just wanting to affect the game when you've got the ball. There's a job to do, and and everybody's got to do it. And and that's that's how football is, and and that's how we want it to be. I was going to say. I mean, obviously, you talk about these these sort of meetings after games and every now and again, and people sort of say it's a good idea because it stops things building up. But are you, is it part of you is a bit frustrated that you have to have a a discussion like that at this stage of a season? Um, I wouldn't say disappointed. I think throughout a season there should be uh, discussions like that irrelevant of performance. So, you know, if things are going well and then, you know, you're thinking about complacency and you're trying to have meetings around complacency and not being out, not wanting things to, to get away from you and, and keep doing the things that give you success. Obviously, you know the stats have been great for yourself and Mark so far, but you're currently on this 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 little run. I mean, how desperate are you as a managerial pair to sort of you know get see the back of it and get back to to what you were doing a few weeks ago? That's key for you know um, you know four games is is not good enough without a win, um, especially with the defeats. You know for for everybody at the club and for the fans, um, you know the players, the staff, everybody shares that frustration, shares that hurt. And disappointment, um, but again, you know you can't. The worst thing you can do is just sort of be um, be downbeat. You've got to be positive. You've got to feel like you can make a difference. You've got to stick together. You've got to work together and, and pull through. I suppose what, what you don't want is that you know what's been a very encouraging half a season to sort of finish on a bad note and then be remembered for perhaps the finish rather than the the major major part of that. Yeah, exactly, and, and everybody just wants to put things right and and um, and make sure the next game we we've, we've got high performance levels, um, you know, and that's that's all you can do. You know, sometimes you, sometimes you lose games, but as long as your effort and aggression and desire is all for everyone to see, then you know you, you can manage mistakes and things like that. So we're just looking forward to putting it right, and I think there's a real um, edge and a real excitement to to go and prove to people that. And we're a team that's the hardest working, um, etc. And again, the fact that you're playing a team who've got so much to play for as well probably helps because it gives that edge to the game naturally, doesn't it? Yeah, possibly naturally. Yeah, because see, they're fighting for it, and, and we've got something to play for because you know we've we've lost games and we're trying to put a stop to our, our current form. So um, I think it'll be a good encounter. Brought to you by DIS, keeping companies connected with cloud-based solutions. Come on, city.